My name is Raquel Shaw, and I've been working on a piece called Vaginas on Display throughout the entire semester in her class. And uh, I really want to keep working with it when I get in like the future, because I have this really big passion for helping people. And I thought maybe if I did something that's really relatable, it could help people like find some type of solace or comfort, maybe help them in their own life. It's great. Raquel has been working on this piece throughout the semester in a performance of performers in authors class that I had developed and have been teaching. And it's just been so wonderful to watch you grow this piece from where it started to where it is now. And we're about to do this piece tonight to a live audience in the final acting showcase here at William Jewell College. So without further ado, I will let you take the stage. Oh, and I'm Professor Martin. <laughs> Whenever I look in the mirror, I don't like what I see. All I see are flaws. And that's not right. Right? I mean, everyone's supposed to love themselves and think that they're beautiful in some way. But I found it exceedingly difficult to do that. Throughout my life, I've had occurrences that happened that have slowly diminished my self-confidence. I remember the first time I had my period. Mm. It was a summer day, so it wasn't at school, thank goodness. But I remember holding those shorts in my hand, just thinking, is this the way it's supposed to be? Because I'm pretty sure I thought, I knew I was supposed to bleed at some time, but I just didn't know how it would happen, and I wasn't really expecting this, and it just came to me one day, and it was just like, I don't know what to do with this. So I took the shorts to my mom, shaking, you know. I just showed them to her, just said, look. And she said, oh, we can get that out with some water and so It's fine. And I said, no, mom, look. And she's like, oh, is this your first time? Yes, it is. And that's when she told me about the rules of having a tampon in your bag, you know, just in case you leak through, and maybe not wearing white pants on the days you're having your period, or wrapping up the pads when you're done with them, when you throw them away, never flush them down the toilet, you know, things like that. But I remember the first times you start having your period, you're kind of gauging how many you're going to need. You don't really know. It kind of takes you by surprise. I, there was an incident I had on the bus. I wasn't very popular or anything like that. So when the popular girl decided to sit next to me, I was really excited. I couldn't believe she finally was talking to me after all this time. Finally, it was going to happen. I was going to be popular, I was going to have friends, I was going to go places and do things, instead of being stuck in, stuck in this sucky suburb. I was on my period that day, and as I was sitting, I could feel the blood oozing down. And I knew, as soon as I got up, it would still be there. But when my stop came, I got up and I walked away. And as I was walking down the steps, I heard, Ew! I knew then she would never talk to me again. And she never did. I watched the bus leave, embarrassed, crying, lost my chance out of something that I couldn't control. My whole life, the vagina's been kind of a mystery to me. I mean, I don't even remember 
the first time I found out that there was different holes. Like, what? <laughs> All I knew was that it was a big mystery. And I knew I had legs on the side and that there was some hair here that was sprouting up pretty early. But uh, still was a mystery for a long time. And they never really tell you about size when it comes to tampons. I mean, they tell you to relax when you're putting them in, sure, but you don't get the right picture when you think of relax. You're just like, oh, okay, yeah, I just gotta relax. But <laughs> they mean down there. I remember sitting in a child bearing class, one of those classes at junior high, they give you like the fake baby and you take care of it. I dropped that class. But I remember listening to the girls for the first few minutes of the class. I just cannot put in tampons. They're just like too big. I, I can't do it. I remember looking over my shoulder, looking away, just getting up and leaving. I didn't want to be there, and I didn't have to be there. I'm probably not going to have any babies. I know it's been a really long journey with my vagina, and she's always been there for me, <laughs> even when I didn't want her to be. And I mean, that wasn't even the biggest part of my insecurity. This was. This little mirror it tells you what you look like, right? Well, not so much. You don't actually look like this two-dimensional, flat image you see in the mirror. It's not really you. It's not really me. This is me. This is not me. And I don't have to focus on this. I don't need a fucking mirror to tell me what I look like. I can just not care. I can just... Walk around, be happy, not judge this girl in the mirror I see. She doesn't deserve to be judged. She, she doesn't look like anybody else. She's unique. And maybe that's why I didn't think she was ever beautiful. All my life I've been an artist and I thought celebrities were beautiful and models women in magazines, beautiful, skinny figures. And I was never like that. I didn't have the European nose or the beautiful complexion. I had acne all my life, and that was very damaging to my self-esteem. I never thought my skin was good, even when it wasn't that bad at all. When it was just a couple pimples, I still thought that I looked hideous because I had them. I didn't realize until much later in life that no one really noticed I had pimples. I still have them. And, and I don't know if you can notice, but I don't really care anymore. My face is very unique. I have a unibrow and a mustache. I mean, I take care of them, you know, shave them, tweeze them. But I used to like, shave my unibrow too. That's not a really good idea because you can kind of get distracted or accidentally slip. <laughs> I went to summer without eyebrows. <laughs> I drew them on with marker. Hope no one in the pool noticed that my eyebrows were running. <laughs> but there is a beautiful woman who looks like this. And that's me. I'm unique. I'm not I don't look like the models or the sporty tampax pad girls who can 
jump around and play tennis when they're on their period because they're wearing a super fit or they have sports where they tell you, oh, the, the flow ring will give you extra damage control. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a hurricane. <laughs> bleeding, that's all. <laughs> and those, those stupid sayings that they have on the box, easy glide, super absorbent. It's never an easy glide. And they only absorb as much as they can take. I wish that girls didn't say ew when you walked away with blood on your pants. I feel like we're here to help each other, not hurt each other. And so, if you ever bleed in your vagina, bleed through your pants, you can come talk to me. I won't laugh at you or say you. And if you ever look in the mirror and you don't like that person you see, you can be rest assured that that's not really who you are. This is who you are. And this is what you make of it.